Ford is continuing their sales momentum. They are still number one for sales. The number one sold brand, number one sold in trucks through the second quarter because they had it for Q1 2023 and now they've got it for Q2 2023. So Ford is America's number one brand, six consecutive months in a row. And that's a lot of that has to do with the strength of their pickup sales, vans, commercial vehicles, and the new Escape. So the new Escape, it's flying off the lots. We have zero Escape inventory. Edge, we just got five today. Uh, five last Friday, I think within a week, they'll be sold. Wow. And we had five, actually, sorry, we had seven, but two were pre-sold before even showing up. Uh, so the people took that before seeing the vehicle, knowing it was on its way. So the F-Series is America's number one truck with Q2 sales up 34%. First half sales of F-Series up 27.9%, widening its lead, I guess, over the Silverado by 118 trucks. But GM, Chevy, they don't clump them together. They're each their own. So that's a whole different story right there. Ford electric vehicle sales continue to grow. So the Mustang Mach-E sales pace quickened at the end of Q2 with sales in June up 110% versus last June. So that smaller YouTube, which got 59,000 views on his, his three or four minute video saying that Ford can't sell any trucks, they can't sell any electric vehicles, they're completely doomed, they're gonna go bankrupt really I, I sound like i'm being outrageous and exaggerating i'm not exaggerating if you if you don't believe me watch the video let's get this video up to 200,000 views um but electric sales at ford are up they're they're up they're growing locally i know there are some dealers that have mock e's sitting around at their dealers for long periods of time It'd be easy to assume that Ford, you know, when you see a dealer that's had the same Mach-E on location for, let's say, 200 days, it's easy to assume Ford can't sell Mach-E's. Ford is going to go bankrupt based on their electric venture. The reality, some areas just don't like electric vehicles, that they're not hungry for them. In my area, all our electric vehicles are still sold in advance and the only way we're going to be getting where we get those vehicles, only way we, we get extras is if when the vehicle comes in, person doesn't pass for credit. The budget can't handle it anymore. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, Michael Kostov, 16. Really appreciate the support. Uh, John B. Meanstroke, really all the members. That is a fantastic way to support us. And all the, ti uh, all the tips we received tonight, truly appreciate it. Very, very kind. So sales are up at Ford, electric vehicle sales are up. Ford's, Ford themselves said, look, we're going to lose, I think it was $3 billion in 2023 on the sale of our electric vehicles. But in two years, we're going to be making money with the sale of our electric vehicles. So what does this mean? It means they have a planned loss. Just like when the PS4 came out, they lost money for a, a few years. When the PS3 came out, PlayStation, for those of you that aren't, aren't into game consoles, but often a new game console comes out and they lose money for years, but the venture ends up being popular as long as people like the product. And so far, People like the product. Uh, Remy Lebeau, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate, uh, means a lot being clumped in with those huge uh, channels that have been producing fantastic uh, content for years on a regular basis. Now, total Ford truck sales accelerated in Q2. It's up 26.2%, and that's what makes Ford America's number one selling truck manufacturer this year, outselling GM's combined truck and van sales by 61,000 trucks. Again, I think it's kind of skewed the data because I don't think Chevy's truck numbers are in there. Traditionally, they're not in there. They're not clumped together. So a little skewed. But anyways, um, Ford outsell, outsells all of GM in total pickup sales in Q2 with F-Series Ranger and Maverick sales of 246,155 units. I think it's safe to say that Ford 
liked to compare themselves to GM quite a bit here. Also, um, Ford has a number one van. Sales were up 30.1%. The EV van is selling well in some areas. It won't sell well and it'll sell, sit on the yard for months and months and who knows, maybe even more than a year. But generally, sales of the EV van are very good. There's demand and Ford, all manufacturers need a better system. I think there should maybe be, this would cost the manufacturers a lot of money, but there needs to be housing warehouses and dealerships should get what they need from the warehouse so that what they actually get on the yard in their lots is exactly what their area needs. Some area, the EV truck doesn't work. The EV truck would be a horrible idea in an area with no city centers and no recharge station. Just like earlier in the live, we were saying, our lightning going down the 95, I don't think would be very convenient. We had a friend, Eric, he took his wife's, him and his wife and the kids, I'm assuming the kids, got in the Hyundai and wasted an entire day looking for chargers. And they kept constantly only finding 110 volt chargers. Their experience was horrible. He's very frustrated. They love their electric vehicle in Quebec because we have a fantastic charging network. And often when you're not doing, you could long distance drive in Quebec, it's never an issue. Mind you in the States, long distance driving, especially when there's no major city centers, becomes a real issue. Soon, it will not be an issue because all the Ford dealerships that sell EVs are going to have to have a fast charger available 24 seven. So there's a Ford dealership everywhere. There's about 3000 in the US, 300 in Canada. That's gonna be a fantastic add on to the electric network and Ford soon you can get an adapter, I believe for free, it looks like from Ford so you can use Tesla chargers. And second gen Ford vehicles are gonna come equipped with the NAX charger. So that's the, the Tesla setup, the North American charging standard system. So there'll be one standard and even the Europeans are starting to adopt it. I believe just recently Mercedes adopted the NAX standard. Uh, so sales are up at full board and that is pretty much gives us in a nutshell that things aren't all doom and gloom. We're not going to see sales decrease. We're not going to see prices decrease by 50%. We're not going to see prices decrease by 80% unless you're taking the most ridiculous dealership at the peak of over MSRP prices. So let's say six months ago, a year ago, and then you, sorry, a year ago, and you compare them with prices that are going to be in six months, then maybe there'll be a 50% difference between the craziest dealership. But on average, prices on the new are probably going to go down anywhere from one to 10% on the new, probably five or 6% rebates on the new, but we're probably going to see we've already lost 4% and most of the market has not reacted in the use. So where can you get a good deal? Well, I'll tell you, you can get a good deal by looking up Ford uh, sorry, let's say you look up online good dealerships. So I think this was smart. I know Brandon car questions answered for his dealership. He lowered prices. He saw that vehicles are costing and he talked about this in one of his videos. I thought it was fantastic. I really respect what he did. He saw prices going down at the auction. So he knows the market is going to eventually adjust. But why adjust? Why be one of the last dealerships that adjust? Because when you're one of the last dealerships that adjust, you pay more interest for months and no one is going to look at you and say, hey, they're good guys over there. What great service. I really like their price. You're not going to attract business. So you're going to pay extra interest and you're going to end up losing out anyways. Why send it back immediately to the auction house? Why not pass the good price, the better rebate onto the customer? So you'll see dealerships. So good dealerships are gonna adjust right away. So I'll just give you an example here. So I was looking at a vehicle just recently, clicked on it, 
and it said, well, I can remember one exactly, it was a Lincoln Aviator. So the Lincoln Aviator has a $3,000 rebate on it. So it was 77,988. Now there's a $3,000 rebate on it, 74,988. Why? Because the dealership wants to adjust to auction prices, to trade in prices, which have gone down by 4%. They want to adjust to it and be ahead of the game. Gain, gain, get, gain yourself new clientele, gain the respect of your clientele because if you have a $3,000 rebate because you're adjusting to the market, well, one, you're being fair because you're going to pay the trade-in less than you would have a month ago. You're going to pay it roughly 4% less than what you would have paid it a month ago. So why not also reduce the new? That way it's a fair price for both the buyer and the seller. And when you're when you have a trade-in, you're both a buyer and a seller and when you're negotiating with a dealership remember you're both a buyer and a seller when you've got a trade-in so good dealerships are going to want are going to want things to be fair on both sides because they want happy customers but they also want to move metal because at the end of the day it's what it is there's no emotional attachment to the vehicles that you have in your yard you just your emotional attachment is with the customers and making sure you pay the bills. And the right way to pay the bills is to be proactive and reduce prices when they go down. And what I think is really great is also a lot of dealerships when the used market prices were going up in 2022, vehicles that they had bought three months earlier at a lower price, they didn't, really great dealerships didn't just tack on an extra 15% because over three months prices had gone up by 50, 15%. It's just someone walked away with a smoking hot deal. So I will go back and say, well, YouTube was mostly telling people to wait. Of course, the catchy YouTube title. Wait 90 days to buy a car. Get a great deal in 90 days. So all through 2021 and 2022, all sorts of YouTube titles telling people to wait 30, 45, 90 days, six months to buy, and they missed the most incredible buying opportunity I have ever seen and most people will ever see because you had some dealerships with three month old units that were now worth 15% more. So you're getting a 15% discount on the used vehicle you're shopping or the new vehicle really, because prices on the new took a long time to go up as well, but you're getting 15% more for your trade. So overall, you're saving 30%.